Hi there, and welcome. In this video, I want to show you how to combine a uh, simple triad arpeggios into a more sophisticated arpeggio run across the neck of the guitar, uh, over two and even over three octaves. Now, it gives a very cool sound, and it is very suitable to adapt it or expand to an even more interesting version. After discovering the major, minor and diminished arpeggio patterns, we'll have a look and find out how to apply them to modal music, like Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian and Mixolydian. But first things first, let's have a short recap of the triads in the diatonic major scale, also known as the Ionian mode or Ionian scale. If we look at the scale, we see seven notes. And on every note, we can build chords. The most basic form of chord is a triad, which originates by stacking two adjacent third intervals. These three notes are called root, third and fifth. If we do this on every note, we'll see major chords, minor chords and one diminished chord. The difference between a major and a minor triad is the third. A major chord has a minor third, two whole step intervals. And a minor chord has a minor third, one and a half step interval. An arpeggio is a chord in which the separate notes of that chord are played in an ascending or descending order. You can play arpeggios in many different ways. Now let's make a shape for the A major triad arpeggio with the notes A, C sharp and E on the lower three strings. We have root A, the third C sharp, a perfect fifth E and again the root A. Now for this shape we could use the index finger and pink on the sixth string and the rolling middle finger on string 5 and 4. Now we're going to create a brand new major triad shape a couple of frets higher on the first three strings. Now this A major arpeggio shape starts on the fifth interval of the chord. So we have the fifth E on the third string in position nine, the root A, and on the first string we'll find the third C sharp. And we close the arpeggio with the fifth E also on the first string. Next, we'll need a bridge between the shape on the lower strings and the shape on the higher strings. For that, we'll add a note to the first pattern on the third string. It's the major third C sharp. Use an index finger for this note to slide it up to the first note of the second pattern. Now we've made a smooth transition from one shape to the other. The whole arpeggio goes like this. What we did for the major shape, we will do for the minor shape, just by lowering the third interval to a minor third instead of a major third. Life can be so simple. So now our lower minor pattern looks like this. It's important that you don't alter the fingering. Use exactly the same fingering like you did in the major version of this pattern. This makes it much easier to change from the major triad arpeggio to the minor version. The whole arpeggio over two octaves goes like this. Mm. 
this example, I will play both major and minor arpeggios in a row over a backing track. And the backing track will be available on my Patreon page and later on on my Q Gentrex channel. So you can play along. Here we go. Although it's not specific for this arpeggio, the pattern lends itself perfectly for some modal twists. We could combine two of these arpeggios to outline a modal sound. We'll have to find the characteristic chord combinations for a certain mode and play the chords with our arpeggio shape. So here are the chords in the modes compared to the major and minor scale, except for the Locrian mode. If you look closely, you will discover chord combinations that are unique for this particular mode. Only in the Dorian scale will find a minor tonic with a major 4th degree. The 4th degree bears the characteristic note for this mode, the raised 6th. So playing these arpeggios, or part of the arpeggios, after one another, will create a Dorian sound. Minor tonic in combination with the major second degree is unique for the Phrygian mode. The flattened second degree is characteristic for the Phrygian mode. By playing these two chords with our arpeggio shapes, we'll create the Phrygian sound. A major tonic and the major 2nd degree is unique for the Lydian mode. The major 2nd degree bears the characteristic note for the Lydian mode, namely the raised 4th degree. Playing the arpeggios of these two chords gives us a Lydian sound. You'll find the major tonic in combination with the major 7th degree only in the Mixolydian mode. The flattened 7th degree is characteristic for the Mixolydian mode. Combining the arpeggios of these two chords will lead to a Mixolydian sound. We could let the arpeggio span even more frets, up to 3 octaves. We'll take the G major arpeggio as an example. The principle is the same, only now we need an extra slide to connect the arpeggio to the new third pattern, which looks like this. The B on the second string with the middle finger. The fifth on the note D on the first string with the index finger. And the root G on the first string with the little finger. So start with the pattern on the lower strings like we did before, and use the note on the third string to slide up to the next pattern, and play the first two notes of that second pattern, then slide up again to the third pattern, and end the arpeggio on the root note on the first string. The way back is exactly the same. For the minor arpeggio, we'll add the third pattern too. The minor version looks like this. And again, we'll use two slides to travel through all the patterns. You can use this way of creating triad arpeggios also for the diminished chord. We'll have to use a minor shape as our starting point. The only thing to do now is to lower the fifth from a perfect fifth to a diminished fifth. And this is the fingering for the diminished arpeggio. Music 
Superimposing arpeggios over other chords is a powerful technique to create some awesome sounds. You can create all kinds of chords like uh, major 7, major 11, dominant 13, and so on and so on, with just one single triad arpeggio shape. For instance, if you play a D major arpeggio over a G major chord, then the result will be a G major 11 chord. Amazing, right? I will do a tutorial on this subject very soon. So here ends this tutorial. The like button is a digital form of applause and if you would like you could subscribe for even more videos. Greetings from the Netherlands and I see you next time in a crystal clear Q Gentrex tutorial or Q Gentrex backing track. Bye.